Sponsored by MIBRS. Welcome to No Olds Bard on SRB Radio, where we look at the beautiful game through the eyes of former Birmingham City, Notts County, Sheffield United, Watford, Warsaw, and Scotland international winger Paul Devlin. Sponsored by MIBRS and supporting the Jeff Astle Foundation. Dev, welcome to another one of your shows, mate. All right, Gabby, okay? Yeah, how's things? All right, mate, not too bad. First and foremostly, the most important thing, how's young Annie? Uh, yeah, she's okay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's been a traumatic few weeks, mm -hmm. to, to say the least. She's got a, a life-altering illness now yeah. with this uh, Addison's disease, but we're getting on with it, mate. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying our best. Well, anything that you need from us, we're always there in a the phone call in the middle of the night if you need it. And I know that Cheers, all the mate. fans have been following you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Very, very supportive because the Blues family are all. No, they've, they've that. been great. You know, we've had a lot of you know a lot of well wishes and a lot of people asking how she's doing and. Yeah. And we appreciate it. So does she. Right, OK. Let's get our teeth into the <laughs> show. Um, before we go on to the Blues Crisis, I did want to just touch on the Jeff Astle mm. Foundation because uh, Dawn and, uh, and, and the guys down there do do an awful lot of great work. Something that the Footballers, not the Football Association, but the Professional Footballers Association have put £100,000 into, mm -hmm. yet their chairman and supremo gets paid £700,000 as a bonus yeah. and tops up his salary to just over £2 million. It doesn't seem right. No, when you look at the, you know, the PFA chairman, two, I think it was £2.3 million, yeah. uh, there was a lot of comments on social media about it. Uh, and the hundred grand to the Jeff Ashell Foundation, where you look what the important work they're doing and, and what they're looking into, seems a bit disproportionate for for mm. me to be honest. Um, but you know, any any help that they can get in in that way, so, you know, I suppose is is much appreciated. But two point three million seems a lot of money to me. Now I don't know nothing because I wasn't a former professional football player, but you are. Briefly, what does the PFA do? And certainly when players have left the game, mm -hmm. I'm guessing they need a little bit of support, or probably yeah. more support than when they're in the game. How do they support former players that have left? I mean, they help with education yeah. uh, and training. They give you a, a percentage of funding if you want to go and do different courses to, you know, for life after football, basically. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of players that suffer with depression and addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they try and help those as well. Players that, you know, a lot of players come out of the game, not crippled, but... You know, from 10, 15 years of professional football, they need operation on knees, ankles, stuff like that. They're, you know, they're, they're all there for that sort of thing. Now, I've only had a couple of dealings with them, to be honest, with regarding a little bit of training when I was learning to be a personal trainer mm -hmm. uh, and things like that to help with a percentage of funding for the courses. My, my only gripe is, um, look at, from the outside looking in, if you like, yeah. very, very quick to help. Gaza and people like that, very high profile. Uh, but you know, I know lads further down the down the pyramid who've played in League One, League Two, yeah. who couldn't get a couple of grand for an operation. Um, a, a very good pal of mine, Michael Johnson, did, you know, did his cruciate mm -hmm. playing for Birmingham City Old Boys. Really, really struggled to get any help. Yeah. So, you know, although I'm not I'm not criticising that the, they're there and they do, they provide a service, I do think that the You'll probably find if you look at lads who have had a 10, 15 year playing career further down the pyramid, yeah. helps not as ready, readily available to them as it was if you've played for Arsenal or Spurs for 10 years. And to be fair, that's where the help should come to the players that were down the v pyramid. Very much so, because, you know, co contrary to what everyone believes, 90% of players come out of the game yeah. ne needing to go and work and pay the bills. Yes. It's only the top boys who have played at the Premier all their life and earned millions and millions that really don't need to do anything. Most of us, you know, myself included, need, need to work and, and pay the mortgage. And some of the older players of the generation before when the balls were harder and got laces in it, yeah. you know, the likes of Jeff, um, sadly passed away, I think he was yeah. only 59, Jeff, when he passed away. Frank's got Alzheimer's. Yeah. Stan Bowles has got Chris Alzheimer's. Chris Nickel, yeah. You know, there's an awful lot of it, and there needs to be a lot more research, and, and I'm sure that more than £100,000 going forward needs to be put well, from the PFA I mean, to the uh, well, Astor Foundation. You know, I, I realise that being a professional footballer for 15 years, I was extremely fortunate, mm. because most blokes would give the right hand to do it. But also, you know, all joking apart, you, you know, you put your body under a lot of strain. Yeah. You know, I, I go to golf days for the Blues old boys and different other clubs. Heroes of mine, Mick Arthur, Tony yeah. Cotton. You know, they, they're hobbling around and they're mm. having to have buggies and all that. So, it, you know, 15 years as a pro, 
it takes its toll on your body and you look at lads in the 40s and 50s that, that, are, that are struggling to get around, that, that have got aches and pains, you know, and I'm not saying everyone doesn't get aches and pains, yeah. but it does take its toll on you. But again, it's those injuries and, and not so much these days because they are wrapped up in cotton mm. wool, a lot of the players, yeah. you know, the boots are like slippers. The, the pitches are yeah. like golf well, you, you, greens. You, you know, you never see a muddy pitch now in the top two leagues. You're not allowed to get tackled. and You're not yeah. playing against people like Kenny Burns anymore who's going to yeah. bash you up. So it's yeah. f physically now, from a from a getting stuck in point of view, mm -hmm. there's probably never been a better time to be a player. And in them days, they used to have smaller squads, so there was a necessity, yeah. not only for you know the, the teams to keep winning, like famously when mm -hmm. Villa won the league, I think they won it with about 14 players, didn't they? Yeah. But you win bonuses as well. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, you wanted to play because you win bonuses and, and appearance money probably yeah. probably doubled your wages. Yeah. So you wanted to A, be in the team and, uh, and B, stay in the team. So if you got a little knock or you was slightly injured, you know, you didn't tell the manager because you thought, if I get out of the team here, I might not, be, I might not get back into it. It. And you had that drug cortisone whacked into your body, yeah. and that wasn't good for you, was it? No, you know, I, you know, I've had it in my ribs, I've had it in my ankle, I've had it in my toes, and you know, you feel you feel great straight away after, but long term it doesn't do you any good. But yeah. you want to play. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, talking about playing, Birmingham City crisis, they're not playing very well. What's gone wrong, Dev? Oh, God, where do you start? Yeah. I mean, how, how long, how far back do you want to trace it to? Yeah. Um, I mean, let's just touch on the current situation. Just looks a squad at the minute devoid of any confidence, uh, any belief, any desire. Now I know, I know every one of them lads doesn't go out there with the idea not to try because you don't as a footballer. But I just think you've got to show more. Uh, you've got to show a lot more passion and desire to put your body on the line to try and do something, spark the game, thunderous tackle. We've talk, talked about it before, uh, you know have the balls to get the ball, get on it, try and do something. At the moment, uh, you know, I saw Steve Cottrell's interview and saying that we look frightened to death. I, I agree with him, lads do look scared. But if you can't play at home in front of that, in those fans and feel G'd up and ready to go to war, when can you play? But have them players got it in themselves to be like that? And it's one thing saying, yeah, you need to have balls, but if they're eunuchs, they ain't got them, are they? Well, listen, uh, if you look at our squad... There's no way, yeah. on paper, we should be anywhere near the bottom. I'm not saying we should be getting promoted. Shouldn't be anywhere near the bottom. Mid-table, it? Yeah, mid minimum. Minimum yeah. mid-table. But yeah. you don't play football on paper. Yeah. I don't know the lads personally. I know one or two. I know Robbo and mm -hmm. Craig Gott. You know. Yeah. But I, I, I think the characters that you're on about from yesteryear and years gone by, I question whether that squad's got any of them. No. They can all play. Mm. They're all good players. Mm. You know, most of them are good players, yeah. in my opinion. But I don't think you can you can sort of coach that side of the game into them. You either are that way, like a Martin O'Connor, yeah. a Jeff Horsfield, a Grange or someone mm -hmm. like that, who's got that inbuilt desire of day so we mm -hmm. ain't getting beat today. You, you're not doing your job, you're not doing your job. You come here and you have it out in a changing room and then you go out. I don't know whether there's any of that in that team. It doesn't look like it. Teams are always only as good as um, A, the goals that you score, mm -hmm. And B, your senior pros, yeah. they're the ones that give you that leadership. Yeah. We, A, haven't got goals in the team, mm -hmm. and B, we haven't got senior pros that are leaders on the yeah, pitch. Yeah, the, the goals is not a new thing. Last yeah. season was the same, uh, and I think come the end of this season it'll cost us an extra point because I think we're the lowest scorers in the country, let yeah. alone the league, aren't we? And I do feel sorry for the forwards because they don't get a lot of service. They don't get a lot of chances. Uh, it, it's a thankless task. I mean, to be honest with you, Gallagher... First half of the season, I thought he was completely out of his depth, but he's turned it round, in my opinion, and he's done well the second half of the season with what he's had to work with. Adams, you know, sticking him out left, there, there, and everywhere. To me, I'd play Adams and Gallagher down the middle. Obviously, unfortunate with Vassell, because he was looking very lively and dangerous, mm. but he's out the picture now. I just think we've got to simplify it, play two lads up front, especially at home, and get after teams, especially Barnsley. See, the thing is, when you um, score goals, most of the goals are scored in the box. Mm. If you ain't got players in the box, the only way you're going to score goals is from outside the box. Yeah. When you're nervous and you don't want to shoot, you've, have, you've almost got no chance of scoring a bloody goal. No, uh, but, but if you're not getting balls in the box and you're not getting yeah. bodies in the box, yeah. you're not going to score in the box. That's why, to me, I would, especially at home, because the championships, everyone's such of a size, similar mm. level, really. You know, Wolves, good team. 
Burton towards the bottom of the league, but yeah. there's not massive amounts of difference between the rest of the team. Mm. So it's not as if you're going to say, well, we'll have to play extra player at the back because they've got this player, that player. Now, to me, I'd go 4-4-2. Yeah. Uh, I'd simplify it. I'd go a little bit more direct, and I'd say, right, I want two forwards up front. Let's get wingers get into the byline, cross it in, get balls in the box. If you're crossing it from the right, get the left winger in, put mm. teams under a little bit of pressure. The game on Saturday, we never got Barnsley on the back foot. So we could never establish our dominance yeah. in the game because the problem is now it's easy to come and play at St Andrews. Easy to come. Whereas in years gone by, thank God, they're going to get after us here. Yeah. The players are going to get after us. The fans are going to get on our back. People enjoy to co to coming to St Andrews now and playing because they know they can get a result. And they're all nice players, aren't they? There's no horrible bastards like you. No, and no. Ranger, no, listen, Martin O'Connor yeah, and the horse. We, we've spoke about it before. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Horse has mentioned it. Mm -hmm. You know, speak to Dicey. Dicey's mentioned it. You've got to get after people yeah. at times. And if that means upsetting some of your teammates for an hour on the pitch, yeah. then you do it. If it yeah. means having a little bit of a scrap at half time or after the game, you yeah. do it. Because you're doing it for the greater good. Because you don't want to lose football matches. Yeah. But I don't know how much of that goes on. Now, the manager, um, I've said many times on, on these shows and, uh, and on Facebook as well, and to your friends when you're in the pubs mm. and, and stuff and what have you, he talks in riddles. Mm. I mean, he wouldn't motivate me no. to uh, to get out of bed. Yeah, I don't think he's helped himself. No. I mean, I, I will stand up for him slightly, saying he's inherited that squad of players. Uh, he's came into the club at yeah. a really, really low ebb. But to me, then on, on the flip side of that, from the outside looking in, I think team selections, mm. I think substitutions, uh, and definitely some of his interviews haven't helped him. So I think although he has, you know, he's obviously got problems there, the league position tells you that, I don't think he's helped himself. But in terms of inheriting players, and, and to a certain degree, well, not to a certain degree, there isn't a manager that's ever managed that mm. hasn't inherited yeah. players. Gary Rowett inherited a team that had got, like, spanked by eight yeah. at home to Bournemouth. He instantly turned it around. Yeah. I think Wolves was our first game, then we drew nil-nil away, yeah. didn't we? And Rowett got a tune out of very, very average <coughs> players. You could argue some of these players are better than, than the players that Rowett inherited, but he doesn't seem to be getting tunes out of players. I, my personal opinion, I think the players look at him and think, twat. Mm. <laughs> I <laughs> honestly do. <laughs> you, you may be right, you don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask the players about it, which they're never going to no, tell you, by the way. But I just, obviously, Gary came in. He did extremely well. It, it, yeah. In fact, now you look a year or two months down the line, mm. it actually looks what he did better. Uh, yeah. When you look at what's gone on since, but he did come in with a with a small squad, mm -hmm. with nothing nothing really to spend and limited resources to bring players in. So you've got to make do with what yeah. you've got. I think at times here yeah, now, we've got quite a big squad when everyone's fit, yeah. and it's almost all, what, what is the best? Who is the best to play? You know, sometimes he's got maybe have too much to choose from, mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of excuses what yeah. I can give to him. So well, why has he done that? Why has he done that? But but ultimately. Listen, when you go on that pitch, you, you can yeah. have mm. Mourinho or Guardiola, Guardiola sitting on the sideline or whatever. You've got to take a little bit yeah. of responsibility as a player. If you're picked in that team to go out, you've got to show more than what they're showing at the minute. And especially when you're in a relegation battle, to go away to, for instance, Brentford, mm. as they did, and get absolutely whacked. Mm. I mean, that, that almost, in itself, is a sackable result, isn't it? You know, you look at some results and you go, do you know what? I don't see how he can get up in the morning, do his job, mm. still be Birmingham City's manager. Well, 5-0, obviously, a thumping. I didn't go yeah. to the Brentford game. I, I, it could I, have been 12, well, apparently. Well, you, you know, Brentford ain't bad at home. No, this, this yeah. but, but really, yeah, OK, you, you say Brentford are good at home, punching above the weight yeah. for the size of club. Should we really be going there and getting beat 5-0? Birmingham no, not when City. we nick their best players. Birmingham City, well, yeah, well, yeah. And, <laughs> and and Villa have nicked another couple of the best players. Yeah. So, where are they getting all these players where they're losing their best players exactly. on a seasonally basis yeah. and they're still doing better than us? And How this, are they doing that? But this is where it comes down to recruitment and getting good management mm. and a good team of coaches as well. And in Dean Smith, 
they got a great coach and manager from Warsaw. And like you say, he's lost a lot of players. He didn't moan about it no. because he knows that's his job at a club like yeah. Brentford. He's got on with it. He's produced other players. And they're as good now, as, or probably better now, yeah. than when Dean Smith took over. And he must have lost half a dozen of his best players. Well, we need to ask him how he does it, don't well, we? Exactly. <laughs> or get him down at Birmingham. And yeah. I think that's a problem there for me. This manager is out of his depth. Mm. I think he talks in riddles. And I think he's an idiot. Mm. And I just don't think he's getting anything. And, and I think if they, they keep on with Steve Cottrell, I honestly think Blues will get relegated because I just don't look at... I can't see where the next three points are coming from. Well, looking at the game and the body language and obviously, you know, seeing interviews after the game on Saturday, I'd be inclined to agree with you. Yeah. I mean, at the start of the week, when I, you know, a week, ten days ago, I'm thinking, well, Millwall and Barnsley at home. Yeah. Got to be getting six points here. Now, that's no or at least four. Yeah, that's no disrespect yeah. to, to Millwall or Barnsley. Mm. Uh, but to come away with, with none, but, you know, Brentford away is a tough game. Yeah, it is. So, you know, yeah. you, you take a defeat, you don't take a 5-0. Mm. Um, but then you look and you think, we've got to win the two home games. Now, I still think we're good enough to get out of it. But I've been saying this for weeks and yeah. weeks. Uh, ultimately, what happens, you run out of games, run out of time. And the league mm. at the end of the season doesn't lie. So I am really worried now. Really mm. worried. Because I'm not seeing signs that we're going to fight to get out of it. But you see, I'm also seeing other teams around the, the relegation uh, zone scoring goals. Mm. I mean, even Sunderland scored three against Borough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. last that day. Uh, Burton had an away win uh, at Ipswich the, the other week. You know, they're getting results. Birmingham are the one team that really are getting no results and are not looking like scoring a goal. Well, we, we look negative. To me, we look a lot of the time as if we set up not to get beat yeah. rather than to go yeah. and win the game. Yeah. And then when we concede a goal... It's just heads down, looking at your little bit of space. Mm -hmm. You think, well, God, we struggled to score one goal, so how are we going to get two to get back into it now? Mm -hmm. You know, I know we had the couple of weeks in a row where we scored three and three Sunderland and Wednesday. Yeah. You know, although the Wednesday keeper threw two of them in. Um, we just, you know, if we go 1-0 down, you just mm -hmm. think, well, it's game over. And um, the next three games, Forest away, yeah. five up at QPR, mm -hmm. down at QPR. Then we got Borough, who yeah. were just off the playoffs. And... Um, Who's the who's that who's the third game then? Chris, who's the third game? I'd got it in my head. It will come to me shortly. Oh, it's Cardiff away. Cardiff. Your old mate Neil Warner. Yeah. Well, we I mean, they're going to get nothing there with I Warner. I mean, it's it, it's difficult ever in the championship yeah. to pick a run of easy games. Mm -hmm. But you've just you've just reeled off you know four or five yeah. really tough games. And you know, most, let's be honest, most of them are really tough. Yeah. And, you know, you're probably never going to get a, not an easier but a better run of three games of Millwall, Brentford, Barnsley. Mm. You know, you'd be looking at them, you'd be positive looking at that. Oh, and, and again, that's no disrespect to those yeah. three clubs. But you'd be more hopeful going into those three games and mm -hmm. the, th the three next games that you've, you've just singled out there. So it's, it's, it's going to be difficult, really difficult. And the game before, of course, Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. um, certainly that second half performance was absolutely pathetic. And I've got to say, one of the worst Birmingham performances I've ever seen against Villa, given the fact it is the Villa, mm -hmm. it is a way, you know what you're going to get there. Bruce has turned them around. They got arguably one of the best midfield players in the championship mm. in uh, in Grealish, who absolutely run the show. I was just amazed how lacklustre, how pathetic, how spineless that performance was. Well, I watched first half and it wasn't a great first mm. half, but I'm thinking, well, you take nil nil at yeah. Villa Park yeah, away, uh, and like you rightly say, the second half. I mean, it, it, Grealish is a good player, no yeah, two ways about that, but it was that easy for yeah. him. You know, he just done what he wanted. It's a stroll, wasn't Yeah, it, it was easy. And I look, and, and you, you hit the nail on the head with what you said, lacklustre. Yeah. There was there was just not. You think, you're playing Villa at Villa Park. Yeah. Get in amongst them. Mm. Show that you want to win the game. I mean, to me, Endoro, he's been a big disappointment for me. Yeah. The, you want it, you don't want him on the board, do you? you don't I want don't want him, him anywhere near the board. No, you don't want him anywhere near the board. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. uh, what he has got, he's big, he's physical, he's a presence. To me, in that game, you'd say, right, don't let Grealish play. Mm. Just go and mark him, kick him out the game, bash, do whatever you need to do. Don't worry about getting on the ball because you're actually not that good on the ball yeah. anyway. Mm. But there didn't seem to be any of that. There didn't seem to be any of that telling him to do yeah. that. And, and and in the end, it was it was. Let's be honest, it was a really really comfortable day for the Villa. Oh. And Villa Blues. One thing that neither team should have is a comfortable day. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, it was third gear, wasn't it? Villa were playing. Well, I mean, yeah, Grealish, every, for every time the ball was in an area, Grealish was not far away to receive it, side on, yeah. pass it out, receive it again, and make the play. Well, I don't we think, ain't got them players. I don't think Villa will ever have an easier half of football no. than they did in that second half. No. And it was, it was dead comfortable for them, which is, you know, it, it's criminal, really, from a Blues fan. Oh, no, Chris, yep. We so got you, some, I'll just yeah, pick a few questions because there is a lot. Um, yeah, <coughs> Cottrell has to go, boys. He's out of his depth. He has no plan A or no plan B. Uh, do you feel um, uh, Cottrell is failing to lift the players' confidence? Well, boy, you know that. Yeah. We've got no leaders on the pitch, says Gary. Uh, there's a lot about uh, Cottrell's press um, conferences as well, uh, being negative. Um, uh, evening from down under, says Richard Baker. Uh, he was playing some left wing at the start of the season, says Mike Hansen. Mm. Uh, and there's quite a few more. Uh, need to start again, board and all. I, do, I think they do. I mean, it's, you know, it, it isn't, again, it's not just the manager. Mm. Although I think, if I've got the choice right now of Lee Clark or Cottrell, I think I'd plump for Lee Clark. And I thought Lee Clark was the worst <laughs> yeah. manager yeah. I've ever seen. No, I don't think I would. I don't think I'd get that far. Mm. I mean, just, just, just touching on. Yeah. But like, I mean, the board, uh, I'll be honest with you, as a player, mm. the board makes... An, the cold hard fact is, if you're getting paid, you don't care who's in charge. That's true. Yeah. If, if your wages are there on yeah. time and how mm. much and, and when mm. it should be, you don't care. Mm. So all the, the thing about the board and all that, that doesn't affect one player 1%. Mm. So you can't mention the board, regardless of what your thoughts yeah. are on the board. And let's be honest, they've put their hand in the pocket this mm. season. They've paid money, they're paying big wages. So, you know, take that, take that one out of the equation because that doesn't matter to a player. The press conferences, I agree with you. Um, comes across very dour mm. and, and you think to yourself well how, how are you going to motivate yeah. people yeah. I touched on it earlier on mm. formations where he's played people uh, out of position all things that have been just been touched on there yeah. Don't th these are the things that I mentioned 10-15 minutes ago where I think he hasn't helped himself in mm. the slightest but like when, when I look at the board I'm on about you've got people that actually run the football club yeah. who, who are the board of directors they own the football club. They then employ people to run the football club. And from top down, not particularly from bottom up, but top down, it's rotten. Mm. You've got people who own the football club, who run the football club, that, that don't know what they're doing. Mm. And, and it's all about recruitment. And I think you've got to get it right. It's like you've alluded to, we need to get it right with the next manager, if, you know, mm. Cottrell does go. But... Do you, do you trust these idiots that are making mm. decisions to recruit the next manager? Mm. There should be people like you, Dev, like the Orse, like Jono, like former pros that have played at Birmingham City that know what football's about, mm. what it takes to get... Because, you know, we could have a, a debate here, and I'd say to you, how about so-and-so being... The, no, Gabby's an idiot. Mm. I wouldn't have him. He's, you know, yeah, you yeah. know what the game's all about. And, and we just don't seem to... If you keep employing the wrong person, mm. surely you must look at yourself and think, I'm an idiot. Mm. And that's what's going on at Birmingham. We keep repeating the same problems. Yeah, I mean, first I will say there is a lot of good people that work at the club. You yeah. know, there's a lot of good people in the offices and, you know, different departments that, mm. that, that, you know, you never hear of. But there are a lot of good people work at the club, yeah. regardless of what you think of the, the people at the, at the top level. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, that they're getting. It's, it appears like they're getting the recruitment of the management mm. side of it wrong. Mm. You know, the last three appointments will speak for itself and, and yeah. tell you that up till this this moment in time. I mean, the the, the problem isn't we discussed it off air. You know, you have got a lot of ex players and a lot of knowledge out there yeah. who are at a certain level. Now, the people at the very top level, and this is probably the same of every every club, the board, you know, yeah. chair. They never get to speak to though. Very rarely do the yeah. ex players and get to speak to that level. But then you'll have other people, other directors, friends of directors and mm -hmm. all that. And, and you get sort of this layer in between the top yeah. level and the ex-players. And they, oh, yeah, we'll do this. We can advise you on this. We, we do this, do that. And, and that's how it appears to me that mm -hmm. it seems to work at, at, at clubs. Uh, and ultimately, you know, if you keep getting it wrong, you're mm -hmm. going to be in the position we're in.
And, and it could be worse, let's be honest. It could be worse at the end of the season. But again, off the pitch and on the pitch, it, it's all relative, isn't it? You know, you've got your goalkeeper, you've got your defence, you've got your midfield, you've got your forwards. Everything needs to be connected. Mm. There needs to be that go-between. Mm. Same off the pitch. You need to have a club that's working together and mm. gelling together. Yeah. So you might have a great catering manager, mm. you might have a brilliant commercial manager, yeah. you might have a great bars manager, you might have brilliant people running departments of the football club, but the most important people there at the club are the ones that's running it yeah. in a football sense yeah. because without that first team playing well and doing well on the pitch, you can forget everything else and it just isn't working. Mm. I mean, for argument's sake, say they got rid of Cottrell tomorrow, who, who, who would they employ? Who would mm. want to come to Birmingham at, with, with the position that the club's in? I don't think they're going to go top down. I mm. think in terms of recruitment, they're going to have to go like bottom up and mm. hope that there's a rising young manager that, that wants the well, job. I, I mean, let's be honest, Birmingham's a big club. A I massive? Think you'd have... Loads of applications for the job. Like you say, you're not you're not going to get top mm. man top managers. Yeah. One, you know, some of the more experienced managers in, uh, who have done well at championship level might look at it and go, "Well, oh, it's it's not quite right there at the minute. That, yeah. that might not be for us." Yeah. But you're still going to have a lot a lot of managers want this job. It's a great job, great club, big club, uh, and managers would want the job. Now, to me. I think there's a managerial merry-go-round, mm. uh, and I look at some of the, the Facebook pages, and it appears sometimes we just throw names in. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll have Gary Monk, we'll have a Lucy, so we'll mm. have this, we'll have that, without any really thought behind. Well, wh why? Yeah. Why? I would much rather see, uh, and I'm not just on about Blues. I'm on about other clubs. Think outside the box a little mm. bit. Look at people like what Sheffield United done with Chris Walder, who was mm. at Oxford or Northampton. You look at the likes of Gareth Ainsworth, who's at Wickham. Yeah. Mark Robbins, who's at Go and get a young, hungrier manager. Yeah. How do they get experience? You have to, somebody has to give them experience. Mm. Sure, someone's got no experience at this level. Now, I'm not saying I've got the answer. I'm not saying yeah. give, it, give it those lads mm. who I've just mentioned. But, you know, look at the Albion, Pardew and David Moyes. Were yeah. All the same managerial yeah. merry guy. Sometimes you've got to be brave enough to step off that. Mm. And by the way, did you see Chris Walder's interview after the Sheffield no. United, um, who did the play last game? Played Hull. Hull. He looked burnt. good, Dicko. Well, he's kind, man. Yeah. Brutally honest. Mm. Brutally honest. No, I keep saying we're a good team. We ain't a good You couldn't have had a more honest interview mm. about his team. He didn't try and disguise the fact they were poor. Mm. He, he told everyone his team was rubbish mm. on that particular game. Uh, and it was refreshing to see a manager actually come out and say, no, yeah. they were crap today. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to tell everyone you were crap today. Mm. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't think we see that enough. No, I think honesty in football is something that is uh, is lacking. sadly lacking. Yeah. But I think that when you do it, it is refreshing. Yeah. But I, I think you're right. I think you need, we need to look at a decent young manager and managers that, that have done it in a couple of clubs. Yeah. You know, not just the one, not been here for five minutes, mm. done it in a couple of clubs and are looking for the next progression. The next, I, th I think Dean Smith would be a great, a great choice. Well, you, you look, you look what honest. he did at Warsaw and what he's done at Brentford. Yeah. You know, he's done absolutely fantastic. And getting them to play football as well, Dave. Mm. We need yeah. football players on the pitch. Well, you know, it's it's been really negative at times. Yeah. And and, and, mm. and I can go back under McLeish and Bruce as well, where it spells where yeah. it's been negative. Mm. Um, ultimately, the way I look at football, you want to go down. You know, you know, as a Blues fan, God, we've, we've seen times worse than this. Yeah, you yeah. know you're not going to go down yeah. and see brilliant football and win 3-0 mm. every week. But you want to go down and be entertained. Yeah. You know, most Saturdays, you want... You want to see your team try and win a game. Yeah. You want to see a few characters out there who are going to get stuck in. Mm. You want to see a bit of controversy now and again. You want, mm. to, you want to see all these things because mm. that's, that's all your talking points in the pub after on a Saturday. You don't want to go down there and sit like this for an hour and a half and have one attempt off target or have lost one nil again. Mm. Nothing worse than that. But do you think, you know, in a general sense, football is lacking the characters today? is lacking the entertainers today. And football isn't as exciting mm. as it used to be. Or is it just that we're growing older and we're uh, more curmudgeon? I, th I, th I think it's twofold. You know, I think we all look at it through rose-tinted glasses. We all think our particular area that we grew up on mm. is the best. But I do think it's sanitised now. With You know, you've know, you got players talking like that, so they yeah, go, yeah. You know, what's, what's yeah. all that about? Mm. Nobody wants to say anything controversial in interviews. Everyone's, re you know, with regards, lads, when they're out, there's camera phones, social mm. media. So the lads ain't got to move on the board, but 
the characters, the characters aren't there. The characters, you know, there's no two ways about it. I'm not saying there's not mm. fantastic footballers out there. There is, but is it is it a little bit more boring and and a little bit too vanilla mm. than how I remember it as a kid? Yeah, without a doubt. I think it definitely certainly is for me when I grew up watching football. I got taken down Birmingham when I was what about seven. Yeah, you know, in the uh, early seventies. You know, we, we we're never going to win nothing. Yeah, you know, I think the furthest we pretty much pretty much got was the cup semi final seventy two and seventy five. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously I do the club ambassador stuff yeah. on the match day for Blues, and I took Malcolm Page round. How was he? Malcolm was brilliant. Yeah. You know, Malcolm was in great form. You know, gentleman Malcolm. Mm. You know, captain his country, captain Blues. You know, up until Stan Lazaridis, he was Blues' most capped yeah. capped player. So, you know, I was talking to him about. Sort of the golden era, really. I think everyone will agree that can remember probably this, you know, mid to late 70s, mm -hmm. whatever. He's probably, we've had the best players yeah. then, uh, you know, with regards Trevor and Barbatton and Burns and uh, Latchford. And, he, and he, you know, he was telling some great stories and he says, well, he said, take Bob Latchford, for instance. Mm -hmm. He said, the defenders especially, you, Bob, get, come back, track back, do this. Do. He said, and you'd moan, Bob, why ain't you track? He said, but you look at the end of the season and he scored you 35 goals. Yeah. <laughs> he said, so you'd think... Well, actually, do we really want Bob tracking back and running his no. ass off and tackling? You know, he scored us 35 goals. He said, so you have to be, you have to take players plus points and minus points into consideration. Mm. But he said, he looked, you know, and he, he touched on the team. Now he said, Who, who's going to get us 15 goals? Who's going to get us 25? Now, obviously, a little bit unfair to the lads now to compare them with the likes yeah. of Latchford and mm -hmm. Trevor and people like that. But we just, that makes, that makes you realise how far away we are oh, God, from oh. having those sort of players and that sort of team. Mm. It is, I mean, it is sad. I mean, uh, one of my well, my first game, um, 15th of August, 72, Blues beat uh, Newcastle 3-2. Yeah. Bob Latchford had three second-half goals disallowed. Yeah. You know, but it just seemed that when you went onto the pitch in the 70s, you had this... We're going to win. Mm. You might not have won all the time, because Birmingham never yeah, never yeah. did, and we've never done that. But you had the belief yeah. that you were going to be entertained, you were going to be excited, and you'd see great players from the opposition yeah. come out, play football, and football was enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, I watched Man United, Chelsea, Sunday. I mean, Super Sunday, I thought it was shocking. Yeah. I thought it was an awful game. I quite liked William. Mm. I thought he had a decent game. I like Hazard. But apart from that, I thought... United Super hadn't got shit. much, yeah. Chelsea hadn't got much, and then I watched the cup final, I mean, that was dead after Aguero yeah. scored the goal. I mean, how bad are Arsenal? Yeah, I, I mean, we got problems. Yeah, I mean, for, for a lot of the games are boring now, there's yeah. no no two ways about that, because everyone's frightened to death, especially at the top level. Losing? They're frightened to yeah. death of getting beat, yeah. so rather than go out and try and win the game, it's like, be solid first and foremost, yeah. see so if we can nick a game, but, but just touching on when 72, I remember when I was, you know, first go down in the early 80s, and you got Mark Dennis and Mick Arf and you know, really good yeah, players. Yeah. But you knew at some stage Mick was going to clatter someone, yeah. and Mark Dennis was going to go through the winger. So you, you yeah. know, you, you knew that was going to happen. That you was almost looking forward to that as you yeah. as you was to getting the goal because it was something like that that might spark yeah. a little bit of a revival or yeah. get everyone going, get the crowd on the edge of the seat and mm. bit of a fracas in the middle and yeah, you know, disrupt the other team. You know, I used to look forward to that, but mm. you, you know. Who brings that to the table now? Not just at Blues, in a lot of times. No, I think generally they don't. I mean, we're going to be starting doing, uh, next week, we're uh, doing a show with Alan Hudson. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. I mean, like, what, a, what a player he yeah. was. I mean, nicknamed the George Best of the South yeah. by the London press. I mean, we have some great stories of George Best and, yeah. you know, Stan Bowles and the golden era. I mean, when you look at the 70s, it is amazing how England never qualified yeah. for a World Cup final with all of the players that we had. Yeah, they had some fantastic, you know. You but just shit managers? Hudson, Tony Curry, Worthington, yeah. you know, p people, people like that. But they were all mavericks, weren't they? Yeah, but and awful management yeah. that didn't know how to manage well, them. Well, <laughs> You need you needed to find a manager that could somehow get them in the, the team or the squad. Yeah. That might have been a good night out with all them, like I tell you. But uh, I think the you know the only man who could have probably got characters like that to play together never got the job, and that was Cluffy. Cluffy, yeah. Um, you know, do you ever foresee a Cluffy type ever getting England job now? It's always going to be a Southgate, a Hodgson, yeah. an FA man. But again, do you think that's what's fundamentally wrong with the game as well? That no matter who we seem to have as the manager, whether it be at club or international level, they've got the clipboard out, they've got all the coaching badges, 
and and they bore the ass mm. off us. We want to we want to be entertained, as you say, Gareth. I mean, lovely guy, yeah, Gareth. Right you probably love your yeah. daughter to yeah. get him, you know, marry someone like Gareth. But I mean, he just comes across as a boring bastard, F- don't he? FI man, <laughs> t- typical FI man. Yeah. But I don't think England, you know, produce the players now at world level. They produce some great no. players, Harry mm. Kane, people like that. at world level. I never foresee in my lifetime. But why England don't we, Dave? I mean, you're doing stuff, you know, with young kids. I now. Just the see, young kids are about, aren't they? What goes wrong? We, we've neglected the bottom level now, the yeah. grassroots level, for 20 years. Yeah. And that's affecting the top level because mm. everything filters up. Yeah. The investment in grassroots football, school football, facilities, everything has been neglected for 20 years. Mm. That's why we don't produce. It's all right saying, yeah, we, they come through, they come through. The young players don't come through anywhere near yeah. as good as they did years ago. Mm. And a lot of them are robots. Six foot one, box to box, you know, great athletes. I mean, it's always that was a great athlete, yeah. and he's, he's, he's this and he's that. I just don't. I just think we've neglected grassroots football for that long. You know, we're, we're reaping what we've sown now. I must admit, when I used to manage, when my kids were young, I used to manage at Marson Green and, and at Smithswood, and I used to give all the players a ball, and mm. it was all about ball work and yeah. football. I remember um, it was a, a scout at, at mm. Crew, funnily enough, mm. and um, he says, what, "What are your players like?" I said, "Technically, I think I've got some great players." Yeah. You know, I'd, I used to play five up front. Yeah. We'd win seven four, or yeah. we'd probably get beat five nil. But we'd we'd roll our sleeves up and we'd have a game. My idea of football is getting it forward, pass the ball, mm. pass the ball, shoot and score goals. That's yeah. what I love. And he says, "You got any big kids?" Yeah. And I says, uh, "No, they're all pretty small." He says, "We well, got no athletic boys." Yeah. I says, "Mate, I'm running a football team, not an athletic squad." He said, he said, well, I said, look, I suggest you don't even waste your mileage well, you, and, and attend. You look at, I mean, and, and you speak to, to people in academies and it's like, no, we don't, we, that's not us anymore, that's not us. We don't. They do. Yeah. But you look at the guy and look at the 15 or 16 year old kids, mm. they're all like dormant. Yeah. You know, my lad was four year at the Blues and one of them, and I'm not saying they should have kept him on. Yeah, yeah. You know, he probably did, you know, he mm. didn't do enough to get kept on. Yeah. But one of the reasons, oh, you know, we look how small he is, look at his size and mm. all that. And I, I think in this day and age, you know, and, and that won't just be Blues, that'll be other clubs as well. Yeah. We still do look how big the kids are. Other countries don't bother. Other countries, if they've got a kid at 15 who's small, they'll play him down a couple of years. Mm. You know, so physically he's playing it. Now, in this country, we tend to look at that as a bit of an insult. Yeah. Or not. They'd rather, well, my kid's playing up a year, mm. or he's playing up two years. But to me, yeah. you, do, you, do, you do whatever helps the kids develop, whether that's playing them down, playing them up, playing them in the same age group. But we are still uh, not obsessed, but... People want six footers who can do the hundred metres in ten seconds, and and they'll tell you they don't, mm. but they're telling you lies. So there's nothing really fundamentally that's going to change in the game. We're just going to no, it's going to go up and up and up in terms of money and the sky money that's coming yeah. in. We're going to want to produce bigger and fitter players, mm. and we're just going to go further down in the, on the world stage because we don't produce enough. Uh, technicians and, and don't forget as well English players that break into uh, I mean they're on about I see on Man U McTominay the kid that's played has he played 10 games yet for Man U they're saying who, who should probably he, not who should he pick internationally yeah. Scotland or England he hasn't played 20 games and yeah. he's going to throw on you know what I mean hmm. the English the British based players especially at the top level who have one good season hmm. get a massive contract Berahino perfect example yeah have a good season at the Albion, get a big deal at the Albion, be a non-trier, get a move to Stoke, be a non-trier, mm. multi-millionaire. Where's the hunger gone? And I think yeah. the players in other countries, in Germany, in France, they don't get the mega, mega dollar at mm. 18, 19, 20 like our players do. And that's why they remain hungrier for longer. Because our players get it all too soon. I mean, better who know that. Yeah, great, multi-millionaire, probably never have to do a day's work. Yeah. The kid's sitting in there wasting absolutely wasting his career but again that's the thing you know I mean he thinks he's doing alright and financially he is yeah. but you know you've probably got 10 years at the top ain't you if you know not, at that if, top I mean the, the PFA did, yeah. did some studies and they say you know taking everyone who's, who's been a pro yeah. seven and a half years yeah. is an average career so you look at better you know and you go when he's finished what do you do son how many yeah. games did you play and you go what you played two and a half hundred games and you played for yeah. like 15 seasons yeah. how did you work that out Oh, you went on strike, didn't you? I remember you were on that jet, weren't you, when you was taking the piss yeah. with the Albion and, and you didn't want it, yeah, and then you went you to know, Stoke. You, you got blokes working all week, you know, doing 40, 50, 60 hours in factories to yeah. go and watch the Albion, and he's picturing himself on a private yeah, jet exactly. because he's got his ice in his hands. Yeah. And then he wonders why he gets stick. Yeah. Now, to me, he, he encapsulates everything that's wrong with a modern-day yeah. player. 
And Delph was another one that done that, didn't he? When he, he left the villa, he was going to Man City, then he was going to stay at the villa, then he eventually left. Uh, listen, when, when you, you, know. When, you know, when you're 45, 50, 50 you know, whatever, you yeah. want to look back and say, oh, I've done 500 games there. I, I played in that game, yeah. I played in that game, yeah, yeah. and what, remember that game? Remember the game at Villa Park when I'm sitting in the Foxy warmly having a pint with Jeff Horsfield? Remember yeah. the game at Villa Park, Horse, where we, listen, remember the game at Ankleman and all that? Mm. What's he going to say? Oh, do you remember that time I was training and I watched the game on telly, but yeah. I'm driving around in my Rolls Royce? Yeah. You know, it's to me, I wanted to play. Every club I went at, if I, if I felt I wasn't going to get in the team, mm. and it only really happened at Blues when I left Blues, yeah. Uh, and Brucey says, listen, I want you to stay. Two years left on my contract, but you're not going to be a regular. How but old was you at that time? I was about 30, 31. Yeah. So it was vital for you to play? I wanted to play. At that time Listen, well. I, I could have stopped yeah. uh, and had another two years. And, and as it goes, I remember at the time, Brian Hughes was even further down the pecking order than, than I was. Yeah. He ended up playing another 100 odd games for Blues. Yeah. So I could have stopped there for two years, maybe, and, and play another 100 games. Mm. But I was 30 going on 31. I wanted to play. I didn't want to look back at 35 and say, well, I spent three years on the bench there. Yeah. More than enough players are happy to do that. Mm. I was never happy to do that, so I went to Watford and played another 100 games. I think that must be that seriously one of the saddest things that, that you can be as a professional footballer. Remembering well, them games, you sat on the bench well, watching. Well, it, was, it was funny because me and, me and Orse often have a, a laugh and a joke about it. We were a nightmare, especially with Bruce. If we weren't playing, why not playing? You'd have a row. And it yeah. must be a nightmare for him. But then he'd have people like Olivia Tebbley, great lad. Yeah. But Tebbs, yeah, I've signed a new contract, but not bothered with that play. And he'll sit on the bench. Yeah. You know, manager's dream because you've got him there and he'll do okay when you bring him on. He's not going to be banging your door down yeah. asking why he ain't playing. Where, and I, I think the foreign players have got a different attitude mm -hmm. with that side of it. Whereas the British based players, you know, Martin O'Connor, kind of great. We want to play. Yeah. When you'd be banging and you know being a nightmare to the manager, being arsy in training, kicking a few in training because you were out the team. So I do see, I do see it from a manager's point of view. But it, it always used to seem to be to me those players that were a bit more laid back and wouldn't put pressure on the manager. Mm. They seem to get contract after contract. So I, I have to laugh at it sometimes. And Tebbs was a great lad to be fair. Would you ever fancy going into management? And how would you deal with Paul Devlin and Jeff Horsfield? Okay. I wouldn't sign them. I'd avoid them like a barge pole. But you'd sign Tebbin. Oh, no, listen, looking back now, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I've said it to a couple of ex-managers, and you don't see it. I must have been a nightmare at yeah. times, an absolute nightmare. I like to think that come Saturday that you could depend on me, though. Yeah. I might not always play well, but one thing I'd always do, I'd, I'd always give my best. And I think every, you know, I had 12, 13 managers, whatever, I think they'll all tell you I was a pain in the mm. arse at times, and I was I was a handful at times, but ultimately, I always tried my best for them. Um, but yeah, it'd be difficult. I'd, I'd love, now, you know, I'm, I'm 46 nearly now, I'd love a crack at management. What I didn't do, and I should have done, was get my badges while I was playing. You know, I haven't got these all-important badges, uh, which... Ma you know, magically make you a fantastic mm. coach and manager. So to get them would probably be a three or four year process. Have I really got the time or the inclination to do that? I, I, I don't know. Um, I'd model myself on a little bit of everyone. Two mm. best managers I played for, uh, Steve Bruce and Neil Warner. Yeah. Um, uh, the two things that they had in common, really good man managers. Really good man managers. They knew the players that they need to get round the throat. They knew the players that they'd you know, they'd have to sort of kid gloves and tell them how brilliant they were with regard days off and when to train, when not to train. Warnock was brilliant with the older lads. When at Sheffield, we had a lot of older lads. He was, especially if you'd done well. Yeah. You'd done well, you'd want uh, uh, say to me and Ned and Pesh, mm. lads, you're going to have a game of tennis on Monday. Yeah, and we'll get the younger lads in and all. It was his, it was his way of giving the older lads a, yeah. a little bit of a time off. But then, in, and the flip side of that, when I applied under A.D. Boothroyd when I was sort of 32, 33 at Watford, he went the other way. Yeah. And Heidi was good, I mm. really liked Heidi, but you know, you'd never get a day off, and if you're an older lad, he'd have you in doing more, but different type of stuff. Mm. You know, going to the pool one day instead of going out running with the other lads. Yeah. So I try and bring a little bit of all the managers that, that I played under and, and, and adapt it. I wouldn't sugarcoat it to any of them. Mm. Uh, I, I like the way Chris Walder is. Yeah. Um, so, so, as a manager, you know you're going to get the sack. You know you're going to get the sack at some mm. stage. So what I would do sometimes, I wouldn't come out, Obviously, you protect your players and you keep things in house, but oh, well, you know, I wouldn't tell lies for them. So no, I thought they were great today when mm. I didn't think they had. Sometimes you got to let the players shoulder a little bit of responsibility yep. as well, because they ain't going to get the sack. The manager's going to get the sack. I could imagine Warnock saying to you, you know, here's a few, Bob. Go up town, 
have a few drinks, make sure you don't drive, get a taxi yeah. home. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bruce, Bruce, you liked to burn it. They mm. were all good with stuff, as long as you didn't take the mick. Yeah. Which I did, <laughs> I did at times, and, <laughs> and a few of my mates did. But then you paid the price for that. You either got it in the pocket, or you didn't play, or it, or it ran you till you spewed up. So we all done it. I mean, Bruce's favourite saying was, you can't kid a kidder. Yeah. I wonder, where was he? Was he out yesterday? No, no, I was all right. He was okay. He was trying to get back so he can't smell your breath. <laughs> you know, little, little things like that. Like, you know, you laugh about it now, but we never did nothing that, that Brucey never done or Warnock never yeah. done. I mean, you probably find now, players in general are as well behaved now as they've ever been in the history of football. Mm. And, and, you know, because it's that high profile, when one or two do do something daft, it's all over the papers. But, you know, you imagine if they had camera phones and that in the 70s mm. and 90s and, you know, uh, even the start of my career, it's, you know, <laughs> being Winston Green. I think, though, in the, in the 70s, if the, the, they did have camera phones, you know, and the likes of your Bests and your Hudsons and your Worthingtons and Bowles and, and all them players were out on the piss doing what they were doing, fans would just go, fair play to them. Yeah, good on them. Probably that's what they? we expect from them players yeah. because that's that's where they were characters like yeah. that. You'd almost be amazed if George Best was sober all the time yeah. and wasn't getting up to his antics yeah. and stuff. It was part of what made him the player that he was. Yeah. So as long as they're doing it on the pitch, you really don't give well, that, a shit what they're doing off the pitch, that, do you? That, that's where Warnock and Bruce were really good as well. Yeah. That they'd, they'd forgive your little shortcoming, yeah. and we've all got shortcomings, whether it be. Mm -hmm maybe go out yeah. a little bit too often or maybe get sent off or booked a little bit too mm -hmm. often or maybe not the best trainer or bit of a moaner, bit of a pain in the eye, all the things I always really. But they'd forgive you yeah. if you've done it on a Saturday. Yeah. You can get away. As a player, you mm. can get away with most things if you're doing the business. Yeah. If you're not doing the business, you can't get away with nothing. Albion players, going back to taking a taxi home, what did you, uh, what did you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the players that were involved, did it shock you when you heard it? Did it? Shock, it did yeah, shock it me. Did it did shock me. It shocked me even more when they said they were four o'clock in the McDonald's and they hadn't had a drink. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, McDonald's and you rub a taxi. <laughs> Listen, as I say, that, you know, it's a daft thing. Most ex pros would have just laughed yeah, about yeah. that. And I know some people, oh, it's disgusting, this and that. And, and you know, it, is, it isn't right, but mm. I've done far worse. Pla yeah. Players and teams. What was the done. worst thing you've ever done, Dan? <laughs> oh, I can't tell you on here. <laughs> and I, 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 I could write you a list down of an A4 paper. <laughs> like, I remember, uh, oh, Jeff Horsfield, I remember we'd been out some time, I won't tell you where, but Alex Ferguson was sitting in the corner talking. Yeah. And there was two people, it was Matramore. And then he was sitting over there and talking to Bruce. So we'd been out and we'd, we'd been on the lash. And there was two blokes in suits playing snooker. So Walsh was winding me up, go and dive on the snooker table. No, I'm not doing that. So I've, I've sprinted at Motrimore, threw myself onto this snooker table, cut all, all, grazed all myself, and yeah. these two blokes are playing snooker, I'd gone into the balls, as you can imagine. Obviously, Alex Ferguson now, I don't know who's, he just, just like shook his head as if to say, well, I, I don't even know to this day what Bruce he said, but <laughs> loads of different stories. Like, I remember being in Czechoslovakia, jumping mm. over balcony to someone over his house's balcony, about yeah. 14 floors up after we'd been out all night. <laughs> that Daft things like that, yeah. but, you know, most of the things that go on, you know, it's hijinks on lads. Yeah. You, you get 20 odd, 18 to 30 mm. year old lads together and you're letting them have a beer and... Yeah. You know, things are going to happen, but 99% of the time, it's all pretty good natured and, yeah. and it doesn't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And actively, managers I played for used to encourage that. Yeah. Not so much now, in fact, hardly ever now because of, of the media side of Which it. Which do you think they should, Dev? Should players be allowed to just let their hair down of course and should. be lads and course, do what they do naturally? Yeah. Treat them like men. If they're that way inclined, if, if you enjoy going out having exactly, a beer, yeah. you should be allowed to go yeah. out and have a beer. If you don't, that, that, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're still, you're still a young man. You've yeah. got a few quid in your pocket. Mm. You don't want to be cooped up in the house all mm. the time. As long as it doesn't interfere with your training and your exactly, playing yeah. and you're doing the business, yeah. I don't see what difference it makes. No, I don't. I mean, if I was a manager, I'd allow my players to do yeah. that. And then if they didn't perform on, that, uh, on, on the Saturday, right, you little bastard. On, you and know. to be honest, Gab, a lot of players won't even want to do that now anyway. Yeah. You know, there's probably, probably mm. players now 
lead that sort of lifestyle where yeah. they, you know, they don't drink, they eat well, they, mm. they, you know, really fit. So a lot of players won't want to do it anyway. But yeah. like I say, you know, it's a, it's a cultural time where where we did it. And when I first made my debut in '92, there was a mm. there was a big drinking culture in the game. Uh, th you know, throughout all the clubs, yeah. you, you look at some of the lads that played for Arsenal and. Man, yeah. you and all that, and you know, mm -hmm. you read the books, and, and you know that was the case. That's gradually got less and less as times times yeah. gone on. So you know that they're, they're they're as well behaved now as they've, as they've ever been played. Ever fancied writing a book, Dev? Yeah, but all the best stories I couldn't put down. <laughs> I couldn't put down. I'd get lynched, wouldn't I? There's there'd Why be about twenty do... divorces. All my mates would be killing me. Why don't you do a, a novel then? You know, so and and no names. Well, you know, a, a listen, football book of sorts. I, I, ain't, I ain't clever enough to disguise uh, like the names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> Something no, might have happened. Listen, I'm telling you, all the, all the best books yeah. from, from players that have played, you couldn't tell the best yeah. stories. You just couldn't because too many, too many people are getting into trouble. The one book I would walk on broken glass to read would be Billy Whitehurst's book, if he ever gets around to writing one. But yeah. no, I mean, there'd be some fantastic stories. Uh, and like I say, you know, when I'm out with the, the you know, ex-players that I've played with down the years, we sit and we talk and we, mm. we have a brilliant laugh about them. And, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. I, you know, I spoke to Chris Shaw, who I played with at Nuts County and, mm. and Sheffield. First time I spoke to him for 10, 12 years. And we had an hour on the farm talking about different games. And we got talking about Graham Potter as a manager. And I, yeah. remember, I remember Chris Short nearly killing him in a tackle, a 50-50 tackle when Blue, Nuts County beat Blues. Mm. And we were having a laugh. At, that, that's some of that happened 20 odd years ago that we're talking about. And that's what... You know, going back to Berahino, yeah. who's he going to sit down and talk about all them old mm. memories with now? In his big mansion, driving his 20 cars. But it's great. Mm. And, you know, I loved every minute of it, but it's all about playing and the desire to play. You, your career is soon over, as mm. I know. Yeah. And let me tell you, nothing ever compensates for not being a player. Mm. And, you, you know, the Villa game and games like that, you don't realise, you can't let those games pass you by. Mm. You've got to give it everything you've got and put your bollocks on the line in those games. Because before you know it, you're sitting where I am and you can't play anymore. Graham Potter, what's he like? I don't know him. I just know okay. I just know him from playing against him. Yeah. Um, he seems to have done extremely yeah. well at, at, at that club. He's bleeding at now. cold up there, isn't he? It's it nearly as cold in here, though. <laughs> isn't it? Well, <laughs> you reckon the heating's over? I don't think he's put fifty three in there. There's a, there's a red light on it, but I don't think there's any you yeah, know, there, coming there out. No heat coming out of it. <laughs> it's dodgy, Laurie. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, he, he's done well, and he, yeah. you know, it's fair play to him. There's not many mm. young. English lads go abroad to manage, especially yeah. at somewhere as unfashionable, yeah. really, as uh, 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 is it Sweden, isn't it? Sweden's Swe up Swe Swe Arctic. Arctic. So, yeah, he's done well. I mean, and you'd think with the uh, the profile he's created now, at some stage he's going to get a job back in England if, mm. if, he, if he wants the job. So, yeah, he, he, you know, exciting. Good to see a young manager do that. Now, you talking about your, your coaching badges. If you were re if you wanted to be a referee, mm -hmm. I'm sure that they'd fast track you. No, they wouldn't. Would they not? No. But do you not think that players, professional players that have played the game should be fast-tracked into coaching? And so, because you can't do all that stuff that you need to because you're actually playing yeah. so you, and you also know the game. Well, I mean, the I've, game. I've talked about this in the past yeah. uh, and I've spoke to players that said they'd rather stick pins in their eyes and be a referee. Yeah. The referee's at the top level now. Mm. Fantastic lifestyle, mm. fantastic wage. I know a lot of ex-players that would do that. Mm. But then they keep me to, no, well, you'd have to start on a kids Sunday league thing. Yeah. Now I'm not saying straight away they should go in at top level yeah. because they've been an ex-player mm -hmm. but there must be some sort of common ground we say well hang on a minute you, you played the game for 10-15 years mm. once you do your training and you're assessed yeah. and you think you're ready you can go in at A level it doesn't yeah. have to be top level chap whatever mm -hmm. you know, why start someone with all that experience on the very very yeah, bottom exactly, run yeah. of the ladder mm. now people will turn around and say well we've had to do it that, that's fair enough but you've got to sometimes say well hang on a minute they have got and experience in the game at a certain level. Exactly. That's got to give them some yeah. sort of, uh, that's, you know, credit to go in. 15 at years at a pro puts you in at a higher yeah. standing yeah. Well, point. Why, why if you've done 15 years at anything, if yeah. you've been 15 years as a mm. dentist or a yeah, doctor yeah. or a pilot, do you have to, st you know, then you go, you, it's, a, it's hard to equate, yeah. it's yeah, a it really is. hard thing to say, but your career's got to stand for something. I saw Sol Campbell interviewed on the telly the other day, and Jeff Shrew the same. Well, you know, you've come across as arrogant and you're saying you're a great football brain. He denies saying that. Mm. He says, but, you you know, let's be honest, stellar career, Sol Campbell. Yeah. Stellar career. Mm. 
Now, why can't he turn around and say, well, I had 15 years and I was a yeah. top, top player? Because that's what he did. He did yeah. You can't deny the kid the fact that mm. he was a top, top player. Yeah. But it's almost like a stick to boot. Oh, well, you, that's got nothing to do. Well, mm. I'm afraid it has got something to do with yeah. being a manager. And they said to him, what's the difference between you being a manager and someone who's never played as being a manager? And he was quite diplomatic about what mm. he said. I, I, you know, he didn't say anything controversial. But to me, look, looking and saying, well, he can tell someone what it's like in a match day scenario, yep. in a game situation, where the player that's never played, the coach that's never played, mm. can't do that. No. Now, you'll have people disagree, well, they can disagree all they want. If you've been a player, it yep. helps. I'm not saying it's a be all and end all, mm. but it helps and it gives you something that the coaches that have never been players will never have, and that's experience at that particular level. Yeah. Don't misunderstand me, I'm still not saying it's the be all and end all, but it helps. When you get people say it doesn't matter whether they've played or not, load of rubbish. So the thing is, if you and I were manager, I was a manager, you yeah. was my assistant for argument's sake, and then the uh, forward would come in and say, Gaffer, Gaffer, got this problem with the, uh, with the sensor half of you. Uh, what do you reckon? What do you recommend? What's your, what's your advice? I'd be, fuck knows, don't ask me, yeah. go and ask Dev. Yeah. Dev's, Dev, Dev's been, where you, where you are now, Dev's done it, yeah. he's been there, he knows the answers. Mm. Me as a player, I played yeah, when I was a kid and that, I've never played at that yeah. level. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I can tell you from my coaching manuals, hold on son, let's get the book out, yeah. look at page 28 like that, and have a look at it. Yeah. This guy here, he's been there and I think that's the difference between Sol Campbell and the player that hasn't. Mm. You know, when you get in the dressing room, First and foremost, Lee, it'll be fucking Alex Old Campbell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then it'll be like, who the fuck's that? You get that, in, you, you get that insta thing. instant little bit of kudos yeah, and respect do, yeah. because you think, well, hang on, I'm going to listen to this kid because yeah. look what he's achieved. Yeah. I mean, people always reel off, well, Wenger, Wenger and Mourinho were still pros. Yeah. They were still professional. All right, mm. they never had stellar careers. Yeah. But they were professional footballers. Yeah. It's really, really difficult to be a professional footballer in any country. Yeah. You've got to be really, really good. So, yeah. although they never they never had a career like Sol Campbell, mm. they were still pros. And again, I, I keep reiterating it, I'm not saying it's a bull and end all, but you get a lot of people, mm. mainly people that have never played, yeah. say that it doesn't matter. When quite I don't agree when, with when that. When quite obviously yeah. it does. I mean, like, hold on, Chris, just before, while I'm, while I'm on this. It, again, it's like, you know, Sol Campbell, he's played for England under X amount yeah. of managers. He's played for us in Wenger. He was in the Invincibles team. Yeah. That... For me, that you, you can't read that, you can't educate yourself that. That is something that you've learnt because you've done it. And I think that once you've done stuff like that, you come in at a higher level than somebody that's starting at the bottom. You know, end you, you know we'll get a job now and be crap, don't you? <laughs> 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 They're going to the fucking unemployed in. Go on, who's on the uh, bell? No, uh, uh, before we wrap up... Uh, we're wrapping I'll, up. We're going to have another hour. I'll, no, I'll be them. allowed to talk about the um, story from St Anne's on Chelmsley, says Martin. No. No? Okay, <laughs> then we go. Let's move straight on then. <laughs> <laughs> and tell Martin I do know what he's on about there and it's definitely no. But it might be in the book. <laughs> yeah. no, no, you know, Anything yeah. else? What else we got, Chris? Because um, we have got to go in a bit. We've got to wrap you it want? up. There's about... So I think there's, I think I've missed about seventy odds. So, okay, uh, I'll start off with something. Uh, that's all fans ask for. Going back to Blues, is uh, is passion and giving a hundred percent. At the present time, we haven't got that every game. Same as same at management level, at the Blues. The uh, problem is all we can see is their body language. X X interviews by Cottrell cannot look you in the eye. You have noticed that he, he yeah. can't. He well, I just, he I just think he's, I, I think he's pretty clueless. Yeah, yeah. I think he talks in riddles, and he, um, like Lee Clark, always used to look at his mm. shoes. I think when you've got no answers, mm. you have this, this kind of where you stutter around. Yeah. You have a bit of a nervous disposition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of people are, uh, are keen on Potter as well. But I can't, Again, I, I think it's one of them. He's done really well where he's been, but would he be able to do it in the Premier League or in the Championship? I don't know. It, it's, it, again, it's one of them, and it we can. I, I th where do you come I in think, at? Listen, he's done fantastically well there. Mm. I, th I think that if we were going for that type, I think there's better candidates already managing in this, this yeah, country. Me here. too. The, and that's not to say that somewhere down the line he wouldn't be, you know, yeah. uh, or he's not going to be a, a great manager. I just, I just think at times what what we all do. Flavour of the month will come along. Oh, get him. Alonso yeah, yeah, yeah. is managing Senegal. Get him. Potter's yeah. managing Assis. Get him. Yeah. Instead of thinking, well, hang on a minute. 
let's have a little look what's what's already about the yeah. real and we've got to be realistic about yeah. who's going to come look at managers that have done it at a couple of clubs mm. that know what the British game's all about have a look at them mm. recruit them kind of managers well I mean listen it's not buying players from World Cups we bought Cece from the World yeah. Cup never buy a player who's had a bloody good World Cup or a good European tournament because when they're playing there for the country with some great players you buy them you stick them in your team and you go do you know what he looks shite yeah. and that's what they're pretty <laughs> done with them do yeah. I mean, well, you, you watch that we'll probably go to the World Cup and get in the team of the team of the championship or something you know what I mean but I mean we're yeah. talking about managers yeah. as if Cottrell's gone you know Steve Cottrell's still here at the moment, yeah, he is, so he's yeah. got to, you know, he's, he's got to turn it round. Would you say go or stay, finally? If, well, I mean, I'd go. I'd say yeah. go, personally. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, listen, I think that I think there's massive arguments for and against. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd probably say go if I knew we were going to get in. I'd say go and bring in Dean Smith. But it, That's what my He's joke. not going to come. No. Why is he? Why is he? Why is he going to leave Brentford and come to Blues at this moment in time? That's why I'm saying it's pointless getting rid of Cottrell now. Yeah. If you haven't got someone. Oh, you need the you need the manager lined yeah. up. It's not just getting rid of him now and thinking, oh, should we ask Harry back? Because to me, I never wanted Harry any, yeah. anywhere near the club. Because mm. uh, I knew it'd end up like the way it did. But again, that was very. It was funny, Dev, the way that that ended. Because Cottrell was the coach there, Harry was the manager. Then Cottrell like leaves, Harry's the manager. Then he gets the he gets the sack, having just like three or four games mm. after the, uh, the the window shut with players that he bought in. The whole lot just seemed mad. It was a little bit like with Lee Clark when Terry McDermott left. Mm. These these managerial teams tend to stay together for like years and years, yeah. don't they? They were wherever you go, you take you take the same baggage with you. Managers don't and coaches don't divorce like that. We've had two managers yeah. like that, and when that happens, it it shocks me a bit. I think if you'd have asked, right, mm. if you'd have lined up fifty ex pros between the age of forty and fifty, mm. and asked them, right, Harry's going to get the job, describe the scenario. I think every one of them would have said exactly how it panned out. Mm. Every one of them, because you talk, it's known. It's, you yeah. know, it's known things. People talk in the game. It's Harry, in it. Now again, we got carried mm. away because he won the last two. Give Harry the job. Throw a load of money. Mm. Harry brings in a lot of players. They all love him because he gives them mega contracts. Yeah. He takes a lot of money himself. Mm. He goes and he leaves the club. He goes a bit richer. The club go a bit poorer. Mm. That's what Harry... And I'm, not, I'm not saying no. Harry hasn't been a great man or yeah. a good manager down the years. But it was never a fit for me. No. Nah. He lives in Sandbanks. Yeah, he does, He's yeah. a cockney. He lives yeah, down. Yeah. He ain't never moving from Sandbanks up to Birmingham. No. You know, how often was he here? How often was he on that training mm. ground? But again... Most people got carried away because we won two games and we stopped yeah. up giving the job. I never wanted him to have the job. Because, uh, and, and like I said, people in the game that know the game would have read how that was going to pan out. Now, to me, it looked from the outside looking in, when Cottrell come, on with, it, come with him the end of last season mm. and they stayed up, I think Cottrell probably thought he was going to get the manager's job mm -hmm. for the start of this season. Now, for whatever reason, and we know the reason, because the club threw a lot of money at Harry to yeah. take the job, Harry took the job. Mm. Now, I don't know, that's me, I, I'm not privy to that, but from the outside looking in, I would say that might have been a factor of why they mm. went, they parted. But again, I, I think sometimes you, you're you better off as a coach than a manager, aren't you? Yeah, you and I think yeah. Cottrell probably is a better coach than, than he is a manager. Mm. But look at Redknapp's last club, QPR. I mean, he left QPR when he had to have um, a knee operation, yeah. keyhole surgery to his knee. I mean, yeah, do me a favour. Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we we can we can rant on yeah. and talk on about Redknapp, Zola, you know, Steve Cottrell's in charge now, mm. uh, and the team are where they are, uh, and they've got to get us out of it. Middlesbrough, will you be up there doing your uh, no, ambassador not, job? No, not for Middlesbrough, it's just the home games I do, so I, I don't... No, oh, oh, it is Middlesbrough at home. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's uh, Forest away, Middlesbrough at home, then Cardiff, yeah, um, Tuesday night. I don't know if I'm there, because it's, uh, it's me and Ian Clark, so what we do, we dovetail it, so oh, okay. Clark, you'll do one, and I'll do one. Do you go all around the ground? We go, we do about three or four uh, hospitality lounges over the cop side, uh, okay. and then we finish off in the captain's club, and we go on the international lounge. So we'll do, yeah. we'll do sort of four, five, six. I'm um, up there. Are you aware of that? Yeah, um, Adana, one of his um, 
clients, and yeah. then I've got a box, I believe, over the Gilmeric. All right. So no, we, over we don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't, we don't go in the Gilmeric. We never go there. <laughs> yeah, so I should be up there having so much to eat, watching the Middlesbrough game. Oh, great. Let's hope you see, a a go- Let's hope you see a few goals. <laughs> right, OK, then. Chris, anything before Just we wrap quickly, it up? Just quickly, and the general consensus is that if you did write a book, it would be a bestseller. Well, I, I dare say it would, but there'd be... Uh, I'd probably get assassinated if I yeah. wrote a book within about six months. <laughs> be like our um, Q&A that we've done at the Con Club, yeah, won't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cheers, thanks for listening, watching. Good night, good afternoon, and God bless. the one